this is Hunter from Hunter Works Outdoors. We're standing out here on Pitters Creek Farm today on the north half of our property in an area we like to call the Back 60. As you guys can tell from the thumbnail and the title of this video, this is the duck hole that we built. It's our most recent project, but I'm gonna walk around here today and kind of explain the processes it took to get to this point. So the first thing we had to do was fix our old road and then fix our water problem. This area right here is really susceptible to flooding during the winter months. There's two springs, there's a creek, and there's ridges all around this bottom here that make this place a really bad uh, flood zone. So the first thing we had to do was come through here and we needed to put a ditch in to collect that water and hit back to this creek right here. The creek was also six to eight inches deep. If I can get the drone up, I can show you guys where it uh, stretches out to. But basically my dad took the excavator and he dug down uh, in the creek, made it deeper so he could hold more water and wouldn't disperse out in the field. So now we have the ditch dug and it runs into the new culvert that we put in because before we were going through the bottom of the creek channel and the tractor or the ranger and it made a muddy mess. Uh, put the culvert in, now you can get across and that ditch redirects the water down that creek that's now even deeper. But to do the road, we first scratched the first top layer off to get that topsoil off and them grasses and that's why you see grasses on the left side because that's where we piled it up. We took the dirt from the creek that he dug even deeper with a good clay bottom, took that dirt out, and we used a skid steer, commoded a skid steer with a bucket, and came through here and smoothed it out and put it on the ground. Then we got a bulldozer and just ran over as much as we can to compact, compact it as much as we could. So now we got a new road. Now we can get in, and now we can put our equipment back in the back and start getting to work on them trees. So stepping inside the duck hole over here, as you can see from my right, it's way thicker than it is from where we planted the Japanese millet. We had to get rid of that brush and the six inch in diameter trees and under out of here to be able to get our excavator in here with a tree shear. So I used a diamond disc mulcher, which is the spinning disc. Uh, it doesn't get things as pretty when you cut the stuff up as the rolling one does. I don't even know the technical terms for it, but it does the job. So I was able to come in here and basically just remove all the underbrush and all the small trees that were six inches and under. So the objective for the certain types of trees we wanted to get out of here was we wanted to leave the acorn barren trees. We wanted to leave the red oaks and the water oaks, which is really the two types of oak trees that we have uh, growing in this uh, area right here. But we wanted to get rid of the sweet gums and the maples and some of the hickory trees and they're not beneficial and they're uh, causing too much shade to be getting on the ground uh, for the sunlight to reach the ground for the Japanese millet to grow. And it also prevents them from flying in between trees and it's, it's too thick for them to get in here. Uh, we do have wood ducks and they are smaller ducks and they will fly and land in puddles but we wanted to attract big ducks as well so we needed to get a really open space to get rid of them trees. So I'm going to throw a picture of that tree shear in here. And so basically the tree shear is something you just go up to a tree, you cut it, you can pick it up and put it in piles. And at first I looked at my dad and I said, "Ooh, we got a mess. I mean, there was piles of trees everywhere, but then he had a solution. So we grabbed a log grapple on the back of the tractor. I'll throw a picture of the log grapple in here. And I was able to back up to those trees after he cut them in piles and put them in piles, grab those trees and then pull them out. I'm going to show you guys the pile over here of the amount of trees that we pulled out. So these are all the trees that I was able to log grapple out of here. And what I did basically was make a spin number. I came to the right, came back, dropped them off, and then kept on coming. The berm wasn't here at that point, so I was able to get in and out pretty easy and grab those trees. Now we put them over here because those are sweet gums right there. They're thick. They're probably six to eight inches apart from each other. We actually left that there for because we have a deer field on the other side of it. So it's basically like a blinder or a blocker uh, from this open field on the left side to our deer field over here. So we line those trees up and now it just becomes an even bigger blocker and keeps the deer more secure uh, so they can't see across through those sweet gums. So if you have the luxury of having a mulcher that would roll forward, still don't remember the technical term of it, or a disc mulcher, you'd be able to get the stumps going all the way down to the ground and you would have no tree left. As you can tell, there's some tree stumps still out here because the tree shear you can't grind down the bottom and get it really low to the ground. So we had a bunch of stumps left over after. I'm gonna throw in some footage of me using the disc mulcher to get some of those trees uh, stumps down to the ground so we're able to go across of them and be able to disc on top of them. The majority of these trees were a bunch of sweet guns. We tried to keep as many oaks as we could. We're probably going to call it phase two next year when we remove some more of these sweet gums and then try to leave all the oaks. We got a couple red oaks though. If you look around and probably see some of them. That one in front of you looks more like a water oak. I ain't a tree expert. <laughs> Beautiful. So now that the inside is cleared off with the trees and the brush, it was time to build the berm. 
So the berm, the first thing we did was we wanted to figure out how tall we wanted to build it. So we grabbed our laser level, we stuck it out in the middle, and we grabbed that stick, and we walked where we thought would be the perimeter of this berm, and we figured out that it was gonna be a foot and a half deep here at the deepest point, and grade up to zero inches, all the way to nothing, in the back side of this Japanese millet. It probably goes about 50 yards uh, from this point right here back, and that's as much water as we're gonna be able to hold. It's 50 yards uh, wide all up to here, but this is gonna be a foot and a half deep. Mallards like 12 to eight, uh, 18 inches uh, depth of water. Wood ducks like two to six inches, they're puddle ducks. So I suspect the wood ducks will be in the back half and the mallards, if they land in here, they're gonna be landing from the tops or from the very edge and staying on this very outer edge. But to build the actual berm, we wanted to make a core ditch, just kind of like that road. We skimmed the top of it, got the first couple inches off with those grasses because you don't want to just put dirt on top of grass because then the water will just seep through where the grass was sitting on the bottom of that dirt and be susceptible for it just washing out. So we ended up scraping the top level off, dumping it off to the side, and now we have good dirt exposed. We took more good dirt, set it on top of it, got it to that height that we thought would produce a foot and a half uh, depth of water right here on the edge and able to compact it down with a bulldozer, level all that topsoil out and make it look as pretty as it does right now. I did throw some brown top millet on top of this berm, uh, try to get the grasses growing so it wouldn't wash on the top half of it. But as you guys can see, it's not growing as good as the uh, Japanese millet. I do wanna add though, if you do plant a Japanese or a brown top millet, army worms could be a problem uh, in your near future. So I already went ahead and got this uh, pesticide stuff that's gonna get rid of the army worms if they ever do come. We planted some millet uh, by our pond over there on the south side of the farm, we call it paradise. Uh, we planted on the edge of a pond and army worms absolutely destroyed the millet. We didn't know to get that stuff until after the fact, but that's something we learned. And now we're going to apply it to this. I went ahead and bought the stuff. So now we got it. So if I see any of this dying off and I think it's army worms, I'm going to go ahead and spray and kill them. This is on around the berm over here. This is in the corner spot. The creek is on the other side of this hole, but we dug this hole as an emergency reserve for water if we needed it. If those springs don't pump like I think they, they think they will, like they always do, we wanted a backup plan. So this hole right here is probably bigger than your average backyard pool. I'd want to say it's about 15 foot down in this part and probably about 10 foot back in the back. I don't know how many gallons that's gonna be, but surely enough when it rains, that's gonna hold some water being a clay blanket down there. And if worse comes to worse, if those springs don't produce or this creek doesn't produce, uh, then we'll be able to pump water with the pump and put it in there so we'll always have water. So we're getting towards the end of the video. I just wanted to show one more view of what the inside of the duck hole looks like and how the Japanese millet's growing. I really can't believe it's growing as good as it is right now. With that disc mulcher, leaving all that debris everywhere, I thought that it would still prevent the ground from getting sunlight and then still leaving some of them sweet gums, as I mentioned, I thought it would prevent it from getting some sunlight too. But it's really going good and I'm really proud of it. And it was been 110 degrees this past July and that's when we were working in it. It was kind of brutal being out here in that heat and the battle on the horse flies and mosquitoes, but we got it done and we won't complain about the work because we love doing it and we love hunting and we love uh, God's creation and his ducks that he provides. But and if you guys like this video, just please subscribe and watch for more uh, videos upcoming from me and my dad out here on Pitters Creek Farm.